26 opposition parties attend the key huddle to stage a united fight against the BJP in 2024. The opposition alliance's name seat sharing a arrangement on agenda. Sonia Gandhi hosts a dinner for the leaders. The BJP quips asks who's the groom for this wedding procession. It's the battle of alliances ahead of 2024 and it will be the NDA's 38 versus the opposition's 26 on Tuesday as the NDA plans a show of strength in Delhi on the same day as the opposition meet in Bengaluru. BGP claims that 38 parties will attend the NDA meet to be chaired by party president JP Nadda and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Ahead of the big NDA meet, LJP leader Chirag Paswan joins the BJP-led alliance. Paswan rejoins the alliance after quitting in 2020. The decision comes hours after a meeting with Home Minister Amit Shah. Pakistani woman Seema Heather, who illegally uh, entered India and started living with her partner, Questioned by the UP anti-terror squad along with her partner Sachin. The duo questioned at an undisclosed location for close to six hours. A sharp comment from the Supreme Court on the Delhi Ordinance issue. The court asks the Delhi Chief Minister and Lieutenant Governor to quote-unquote rise above political bickering while hearing the plea challenging the ordinance that gave centre the control over civil servants. The case will be heard on Thursday now, but a key question after that. Can the BJP get the ordinance passed in the Rajya Sabha? Hello and welcome to NDTV 24-7. I'm Priyanshi Sharma and our lead story, the contest for the 2024 Lok Sabha elections has been escalated. 26 opposition parties are meeting in Bengaluru, hosted by the Congress there. The strength this time is higher than the June meeting in Patna, which had 16 parties in attendance. Parties including the Trinamool Congress, the DMK, AAP, JDU are all a part of this two-day meet to come up with a strategy to fight against the BJP together in the 2024 elections. Now, another aspect that's different about this meeting from the meeting in Patna in June, apart from the strength, is that veteran Congress leader Sonia Gandhi is also there this time and she hosted the opposition leaders for a dinner. Here's our report. The stage is set in Bengaluru for a show of national opposition unity. 16 parties in Patna to 26 here in the second unity meet which has taken over the Taj West End in Karnataka's capital city. Unlike in Patna, the focus in Bengaluru is the presence of Sonia Gandhi and an iteration that the Congress is the central force. Sonia Ji was very much there in opposition meetings. Whenever we are meeting, we are doing parliament agitation also, she used to be participate in the meeting. Therefore, Sonia Ji's presence, certainly she had a vast experience. Sonia Ji's presence will definitely give a strength to the opposition meeting, certainly. Congress's last-minute peace move on the Delhi ordinance paved the way for AAP to arrive without friction. Sharad Pawar will also be present despite the turmoil at home. This is not an individual political party meeting. It is shaping this country for the future of 140 crores people who have been suffering on various issues. This is a meeting organized by the Indian National Congress. We are just the local host. We feel with this climate, with this understanding, with this unity, we will take it forward and the results will come out as Karnataka has given us a mandate. The leaders are expected to iron out their differences set up a subcommittee for drafting a common minimum program, suggest a name for the alliance and also pave the way for the 2024 election. There are serious issues to be discussed which requires depth negotiations. There is also a need to show concrete progress after Bengaluru. What with the BJP trying to demonstrate a similar show of strength with an NDA meeting in New Delhi. Clearly, a bugle for all alliances in the run-up to the 2024 election is loud and clear. With camera person Kumar, 
Pratibha Raman in Bengaluru for NDTV. As the meeting went on, the BJP quipped on the lack of any clear leader for the opposition alliance till now. The BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad took a dig at the opposition parties asking who's the groom. Listen in. The so-called combination of opposition parties meeting in Bengaluru has completely sidetracked with impunity the whole issue of good governance and probity in public life. तो ऐसे लोगों से देश का विकल्प बनेगा ऐसे लोगों से भारत का भविष्य बनेगा बिल्कुल नहीं और मैंने पहले भी कहा था कि 24 के लिए कोई वैकेंसी नहीं है और मैंने एक सवाल पटना में उठाया था ये 24 की बरात जो सज रही है इसका दुल्हा कौन है and as I've mentioned, the senior Congress leader Sonia Gandhi also hosted a dinner for the opposition leaders there in Bengaluru. And here's what the Congress leader Hari Prasad said after that dinner. Meeting, sir. Well, uh, this meeting started with a good uh, uh, signal, and this is the that would be the end of BJP in 2024. Sir, and you also uh, doing uh, the same meeting and. Uh, 38 parties have joined them. How do you... That would be a national disaster as the alliance. Sir, any positive sign from Arvind K. Jival and Mamta? I am I'm not uh, party to all those things. I was not in the meeting. I was only there for the dinner. So how was the dinner, sir? Good. Okay. Wonderful. All were there. Okay. Okay. Sir, how... And the opposition meeting will be met by a show of strength by the BJP on Tuesday. The NDA has planned a mega meet in the national capital on the same day as the opposition meeting in Bengaluru. And while 26 parties are attending the opposition meeting, the BJP claims it will have an even bigger number with 38 of its allies confirming their attendance. Ahead of the meeting, the Lok Janashakti party leader Chirag Paswan decided to join the NDA hours after meeting with Amit Shah. He has rejoined the NDA after after walking out ahead of the 2020 Bihar elections over his disagreements with Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. The big NDA meeting on Tuesday will be chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP President J.P. Nadda. Listen into what he said ahead of the meeting. Kul Milakar ke abhi tak 38 humare partners, jo humare NDA ke partners hain, unki confirmation a chuki hai. To 38 partners, पार्टनर्स कल इस मीटिंग में पार्टिसिपेट करेंगे जिनकी कंफर्मेशन आई है पिछले नौ सालों में एनडीए का जो एक व्याप है वो बढ़ा है स्कोप भी बढ़ा है एंड वन ऑफ द इनवाइटेड फॉर द एनडीए मीटिंग इज द चीफ of the Janasena पार्टी मिस्टर पवन कल्याण माय कॉलीग वसुधा वेणुगोपाल स्पोक टू हिम अर्लियर लिसन Tomorrow is a very critical day for the BJP as NDA allies, over 30 of them, are coming to Delhi. And we have with us Mr. Pavan Kalyan, a very popular politician from the state of Andhra Pradesh and the chief of Jansena to speak to us. He's also one of the invitees to the meeting. Thank you, sir, for speaking to us. Uh, you've been invited to be part of the NDA uh, meet of allies. Um, uh, Andhra Pradesh is not one of the states where the BJP is very strong at. How do you feel being called to this meeting and what are your expectations? Okay, this is not the first time. Uh, because we worked earlier since then. We've been working with uh, the BJP and the NDA since uh, 2014. And I was there in uh, Central Hall also in that meeting in 2014 when uh, Modi ji was uh, sharing and as a PM then. And this particular meeting has a, a special focus on uh, for because we need for anything to transform uh, in a country uh, to change, at least we need a decade plus. So one more uh, term for uh, NDA is very essential for the uh, final, uh, whatever the dream uh, Modi ji and, and others have been building. And to see the uh, completeness of it, we definitely we need uh, one more term for that. I think uh, this entire meeting of NDA partners could decide that and make sure that uh, NDA should uh, have the upcoming elections again. 
Moving on to the other big story, the Supreme Court has made a sharp comment in the Delhi Ordinance issue. And the top court asked the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jriwal and Lieutenant Governor V.K. Saxena to quote-unquote rise above political bickering. The court said this while hearing the AAP government's plea challenging the Delhi Ordinance that overturned the Supreme Court order and gave the central government control over civil servants in the national capital. The Supreme Court heard two pleas, one challenging the ordinance at large and one challenging one aspect of it, the power given to the centre to appoint the Delhi Electricity Regulatory Commission chairperson. The court said it doesn't want to step into the DERC matter and the Chief Minister and LG should sit together to decide on a candidate. The ordinance plea will next be heard on Thursday. But apart from the legal battle, a question is, can the BJP manage to get the ordinance passed in the Rajya Sabha? The bill is likely to come up in the monsoon session of the parliament starting the 20th of July. And ahead of that, several parties, including the Congress, the TMC, the DMK, have agreed to back up in opposing this ordinance. My colleague Akhilesh Sharma tells us about the Rajya Sabha numbers and the future of the Delhi ordinance. The pass passage of this bill depends upon the support of BJD and YSRP and these two parties will play a crucial role. We have seen that how Amadi party has uh, pressurized the Congress party to declare its stand publicly on this uh, crucial bill. In fact, this was the precondition for the Amadi party to attend this uh, uh, opposition meeting which is happening today in Bengaluru. But of course, even after getting Congress party's support, uh, the numbers tell a different story in the Rajya Sabha because we have seen that many controversial bills in Rajasabha were passed even though the government and the BJP does not have a majority in the upper house. And we have seen that parties like BJD and the YSRCP have come on various occasions to support the government on this crucial and controversial bill. So is it same thing going to happen on this uh, daily ordinance also? It's a key question. We have spoken to some BJD leaders. They say that they will decide their strategy on the floor of the house. But as far as the numbers are concerned, right now the strength of the Rajasabha is 238 and the majority mark is 120. The BJP along with uh, its allies and also some nominated members and independents has a number of around 112. So BJP is short of uh, majority mark by eight numbers and if one of these uh, try to support uh, the, gov uh, the government on the floor of the house, of course the ordinance can be passed. Even if they walk out, the, the bill will be passed. So the government is in a comfortable position as far as numbers in Rajya Sabha is concerned. Moving on, more trouble for the DMK government in Tamil Nadu. The Tamil Nadu Education Minister K. Ponmudi has been taken to the Enforcement Directorate Office after the Central Probe Agency conducted searches at his premises. Sources said that cash to the tune of 60 lakh rupees has been found in the searches at the premises of Ponmudi and his son in Tamil Nadu's capital Chennai and in Viluparam as well. The Enforcement Directorate alleges money laundering by the minister in an alleged illegal mine allotment. This comes as the second blow to the Stalin government in just a month, as in early June, the Tamil Nadu Power Minister Senthil Balaji was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. And moving on, Pakistani national Seema Gulam Haider and her partner Sachin Meena were questioned by the Uttar Pradesh anti-terror squad in an unknown location for close to six hours. The anti-terror squad of Uttar Pradesh is uh, interrogating Seema Gulam Haider, the Pakistani woman who sneaked into India with her four children to live with her partner, Sachin Meena, in Greater Noida after she had befriended him through the online gaming platform PUBG. The police is interrogating the love story that the two have narrated and also the Pakistani woman's entry into India. The interrogation has been going on since the 4th of July when Seema was arrested for illegally entering India without a visa via Nepal and Sachin was jailed for sheltering the illegal immigrants Seema and her children. So the, quest the questioning comes days after the trial um, were given bail on a set of conditions. Moving on to important news coming in from Madhya Pradesh. The fallout of deaths of five adult cheetahs and three cheetah cubs in less than four months at uh, Madhya Pradesh's Kuno National Park. The state government has removed the principal chief conservator of forests, which is the PCCF Wildlife, from his post. My colleague Anurag Dwari joining us for more details on this. And Anurag, there were several concerns and questions over the country's project Cheetah, but now there seems to be some responsibility that the government is trying to fix. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, 
as many as five adult Namibian and South African cheetahs and three cheetah cubs. Uh, four cubs were born in March, la, uh, uh, last week of March, have died at the Kuno National Park in less than four months. And with the last one, Suraj, a South African adult male dying on Ju- uh, July 14th in the open jungles of the National Park in Shopur district. And now the PCC, uh, PCCF, uh, uh, J.S. Chauhan, uh, has been transferred from the post of PCCF Wildlife at the State Forest Directorate to PCCF Production Post at the Directorate only. And Asim Srivastava, 1988 batch IFS officer, will be uh, the new PCC of wildlife at the State Forest Headquarters in Bhopal. And uh, the development in Bhopal happened just a few hours after the National Tiger Conservation Authority stated that as per preliminary analysis of post-mortem reports and diagnosis of mortality events, the deaths of the five adult cheetahs happened due to natural causes and not due to any other reason, including poaching, poisoning, uh, or uh, radio caller-related issues. Right, Anurag, thanks very much for joining us with those details. Now to a shocking murder in the national capital. A woman took her alleged rapist to see the floods in Delhi and allegedly killed her, killed the man there. According to the police, the deceased man raped the woman several times before this. So the woman, along with one of her acquaintances, took the deceased to see the Yamuna flood water and killed him there. The body of the dead man, who was in his 20s, was found near the Bela farm in the Shastri Park area. The man was attacked with a sharp weapon through the neck with a knife and the police has arrested the woman and her acquaintance as well. Young male dead body padi hai jisme chot ke nishan hai aur ye jo bela farm hai aapne dekha hoga jo main road hai gt road hai uske bagal mein bela farm hai to uski jo deewar hai deewar ke sath ye body padi hui thi chupi hui to isliye kisi ko nazar nahi aayi par hamare beat wale ne dekh liya tha to ye hamesha inko sexually tang karta tha mrtak jo mrtak hai jo marne wala to usi badle ke usme bhavna mein inhone isko bulaya yahan pe aur Let's now shift our focus to the extreme heat waves and extreme temperatures being witnessed in several parts across the world. In Europe, Kosovo's weather office has issued a red warning for extreme heat as the peak of this month's heat wave hit the country in the Balkans region of Europe. Meanwhile, in California, the Death Valley, which has long been the hottest place on Earth, has also been witnessing sizzling temperatures. The temperatures in Death Valley, which runs along uh, the part of the central California's border with the Nevada, reached 128 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 53.33 degrees Celsius on Sunday. And the, this information is according to the National Weather Office. Meanwhile, on the other side, officials in Montenegro uh, are raising uh, alert levels for forest fires for all emergency response teams as temperatures reached 40 degrees Celsius there. <laughs> 